This video talks about how to use a force sensor and Newton's second law to track the distance an elevator traveled between floors. Now, if you go to the description for this video, there is a link in the description that will take you to this actual spreadsheet so you can practice what I'm showing you here uh, yourself. All right, now what I did is I had this force sensor connected to my laptop on a cart inside an elevator. Uh, I put mass on the sensor, but I zeroed the sensor. So at uh, time zero, it read zero, which is gonna be the net force on there. And then after about one second and one and a half seconds, the elevator began to accelerate upward. So there was a really big positive force and then it uh, slowed down and after maybe two and a half seconds uh, looks like the force is hovering around or the net force is hovering around zero. There's a lot of vibrations on this and it's picking up all those vibrations. I would say that's a lot of noise in the signal, but we can still get really good results even with all that noise and vibrations. As we approach the second floor, the force got a lot smaller uh, negatively, so we began to accelerate downward, and then we finally came to a stop right about and through there. So the force sensor measured the force 50 times a second, and even though there's a bunch of noise in there, we can still get some really good results. So over here I have, uh, I put the mass on a scale to find out what its mass is, uh, this is a tape measure between the two floors, so you can see what the actual distance was here. It looks like about 5 meters and another 25 centimeters. So let's get into here and see what um, we can get done. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, these cells here we will uh, fill in after we do our calculations, but I do have these cells programmed so that if you type in the right formula, you will get, um, the, the cell will turn green and you'll get uh, indication that you're on the right track. In order to calculate the acceleration, I need to know the force, which is right here, and I need to know the mass. So I guess I do have to fill in that formula here first. This is 510.7 grams. We want that in kilograms, so it's 0.507. I'm gonna hit enter the cell turned green, so I have the right number in there. All right, so what we're gonna do is at time zero, the acceleration was zero, it was stopped. We're at the origin, we're at zero position in the, in the Y direction. But after five, uh, two one hundredths of a second, there was a little bit of force on there. So let's calculate the acceleration. It's an equal sign. Uh, acceleration is force divided by mass. So this is the force there was, and we're gonna divide by the mass. Now, as I copy that formula down one, it will use the force down one, but we don't want it to use the mass down one because um, it, it's always the same mass and this cell doesn't have anything. So if you have a keyboard that has F keys, you can hit F4 and that puts dollar signs around the numbers and it just freezes it. A dollar sign in front of the letter would keep it from moving columns as I copied it to the right. A dollar sign in front of the number would keep it from moving down uh, rows as I copied it down. If you don't have a keyboard with F keys, you would just have to put your cursor there and then type in a dollar sign. All right, and the cell did turn green because I had the correct formula there. So what, this is how fast that mass was accelerating based upon how much force was on it and how much mass it had. Uh, now we can go ahead and calculate how fast it will be traveling. Its instantaneous velocity is gonna equal its initial velocity plus how fast it's accelerating and how long it's been accelerating at that rate. So it's a formula, so I hit equals and it is the initial velocity, which is the number just above it, plus this acceleration times 
time. Now I have to be careful. If I just click on the number over here, um, that would be okay for this cell, but it was only accelerating at that rate for two one hundredths of a second. If I clicked here and copied the formula down, the next time it would say it was this amount of time, and the next it would say this time. But the time was always 0.02. It was only accelerating at that rate for 0.02 seconds. And I could hit enter. And again, the cell turned green because I copied in the right formula. Now we can calculate our new instantaneous position by knowing our initial position and how fast we were traveling for a period of time. So it's gonna be a formula. It's gonna be our initial position, which is the number just above it and we're going to add to it how fast we are traveling. Well, this is velocity. And then we're gonna multiply it by time. Uh, but again, it was just for a time of 0.02 seconds. Okay, and um, I think uh, there would be more decimals here than were shown. I re just rounded uh, to four digits there. And, and it did turn green. So the neat thing here now is that these are formulas that refer to numbers over here and numbers up there. Uh, these numbers refer to here and there and there, uh, but these are formulas. So if I select all those formulas and copy all those formulas all the way down, and not just a little ways down, we got to copy it a lot down because it was about 14 seconds between the two floors and we are capturing data um, 50 times a second. So we're gonna, okay, we're down to three and a half seconds and four seconds, get into five. There we go, there's a little faster. And then, oh, there's halfway there now, uh, nine, almost there, 12 seconds. If I had zoomed out, we would have, um, there we go right there. And we'll copy to there. All those cells turn green. So we did really good. So if we scroll up here, we can kind of start to answer some of these questions now. This column here told us what our position was at any value of time. And this question is, what is the distance between the first and second floor? So at time zero, we started out at, um, at a zero position. And by the time 14 seconds had gone by. Looks like we went uh, 5.1678 meters. So 5.1678 meters. And it turned green. Okay. Um, the percent error of difference between the two floors. Well, if we look at the actual tape measure, it looks like it was 5 meters and another. 25 centimeters. So it looks like it was about 5.25 meters. So let me come over here. And we thought it was 5.17 meters, but um, being off by eight centimeters is not too bad. But percent error of difference um, is always the absolute value. So I can say ABS, it's a function that will calculate the absolute value. I'm gonna open my parentheses two times uh, because it's gonna take the absolute value of everything. It's the accepted value, which was 5.25 minus our obtained value, which is just that number there. I have to close parentheses and divide that by the accepted value, which was 5.25. I have two open parentheses, so I need to close parentheses, hit enter, and that we have that number there. If I format it as a percentage, we have 1.57% error, which is really pretty good. Now, in through here, the net force was pretty much zero, which means we were traveling at a constant velocity. So between five and 10 seconds, we should see that the velocity was fairly constant. So we come down here, to here's you know five and six seconds, it looks like um, the velocity is around half of a meter per second. OK, 
okay? Uh, and I'm only just showing one sig fig there. But if I type in 0.5 um, meters per second, uh, that's about how fast we we're traveling. So that's just a simple uh, spreadsheet to uh, use a force sensor to measure distance by knowing the acceleration, velocity, and position.